Hey what's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ines Alea and today it's another Tip Trick Tuesday. In today's Tip Trick Tuesday, I'm not going over any specific tip, but I'm going to show you what's new in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2019. It's just a new release with plenty of amazing things and I will take you through them so you can kind of see it as a tip or a trick because you're gonna learn a few new things if you haven't seen the new features because they didn't exist before, but they're pretty amazing. So let's jump into Adobe Premiere Pro and see what's new. Also, if you enjoy watching this video, please give it a like, also subscribe to the channel for more and definitely hit the notification bell so you get notified when I upload new videos. All right, so here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2019. And one of the first things that you'll notice once you open up a new project is that you now have a home button right here. So in the previous version, they allowed you to open up multiple projects at a time. But if you wanted to open one of them, you had to go to file and open the project. But if you were already working on it, it was kind of difficult to get that back in here. So just to get everything nicely organized and just to have a nice overview, instead of closing the entire application, you can now just go to your home and see all your recent projects right here. You can also open or start a new project and it's just a little bit easier and nicer to get immediately to the home screen. And what's also new on the screen is that you can now open a Premiere Rush project. Premiere Rush is an application that I haven't tried out myself because of the busy schedule that I'm uh, living by, but how I understand it is Premiere Rush is an easier version of Premiere, a smaller version that uh, allows you to edit uh, your videos and your projects on the go, whether it's on your tablet or your phone. And then you can open up uh, the Rush project right here in Adobe Premiere Pro to continue working on it with all the effects available to you. So uh, that's pretty nice. I haven't tried it out. I would love to jump into that once I get some time uh, to, to play around with that. So the biggest changes in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2019 is in the Lumetri Color and they did some amazing updates in there which I really love because I really love working with color and to grade my footage and make it all uh, look all nice and stuff. And Lumetri Color was already a very great tool to do that but it had its weak points especially when I wanted to start uh, doing like HSL secondary adjustments to change specific colors. Uh, over multiple colors uh, and then I had to import a new Lumetri color and kind of stack it all over but you couldn't do that with the Lumetri color and it made it very slow but now you can see right here in the Lumetri color that you can actually stack the Lumetri colors super nice so here you have Lumetri color you can go over here in your effects and uh, well your effects controls uh, once you apply effect to it so okay once you you change something in your settings it's automatically going to apply that effect right here but you can rename this and then it will give you that name right here and then you can add a Lumetri color effect on top of that and rename that and so on and so on and then you can just swap uh, right here in between these two so this was something that I really was missing in the previous version so I'm very glad they uh, introduced multiple Lumetri colors and you can also deactivate it in here and focus on this one deactivate this one and go in here so it's it's very easy to work with now for the biggest change in the Lumetri color is especially in the curve step right here which a lot of you probably kind of ignored in the past uh, which I still know very well when I started out editing uh, curves were kind of the mainstream uh, on, on changing anything in your video so uh, you have the contrast you can introduce some reds and stuff like that but yeah that was kind of it and you couldn't do much more than that so now what they introduced is actually really nice and something new something I haven't seen uh, in other software in this kind of specific way of doing it uh, they have the hue saturation curves which are curves to change colors to um, yeah, do a lot of fun things with it. So I'll take you through it very quickly right here. Let's see, maybe I want to work with my other shot. So right here I have a shot. First what I'll do is introduce some contrast, just so we have some contrast to see. Uh, and then what we can do is, for example, uh, we can go over here, hue versus saturation. So a specific hue can be desaturated or increase in saturation but keep all the rest as it is. For example, we want the greens to pop out a little bit more. What we can do is click over here, click over here, and then just increase the green 
and you can see it's making the green very saturated. We can do the reverse effect and desaturate the greens over here. So you can very specifically change colors right here. So that's very unique and, and actually very nice. Maybe the skin tones need to be a little bit more. And there we go. Next up is the hue versus hue. And this is probably going to become one of my favorite ones because it allows you to change specific colors, uh, which is just super nice. For example, we'll click over here and click over here, well, just next to it and just drag it over a little bit. And then at the end, we'll also click over here. Uh, what we can do with this one is if we bring it up, you can see that we're just tweaking the reds to become more kind of like, like a blue. And now we can drag this in so we're sure that we're not touching the skin tones. And actually I'm working with a, a color that is very close to the skin tone, so it's kind of dangerous to work with that. But uh, if we reset this and we go, for example, to the yellow to green colors, we can make that like more of a golden hour. And immediately look what, what you're doing here. It's, it's just amazing. So you can really go and tweak the colors yourself and even for skin tones you can pick the skin tones and maybe they're not not good enough so what you can do is move this one over and really play around with the, the skin tones here maybe you want to make them a little bit warmer and maybe we want to make this kind of pink so uh, we can go over here and for the blue or like green green could also work very nice so we can individually go through the hue here and with this curves change every single color and that's amazing in my opinion uh, it looks so good and i'm gonna have a lot of fun with this one then you have the then you have the hue versus the luma which means that you can um go to specific hues and kind of increase the brightness or decrease the brightness for example if you want them to look a little bit more tan you can bring this down or you can bring it up uh, to to make them kind of like this and play around with that Next up is the Luma versus the Saturation, which means that on specific uh, Luma levels, we can change the Saturation level. So for the brighter parts, we can maybe increase the Saturation, or for the shadows, we can decrease and, uh, and the colors. So for example, we should read it from left to right. So the left should be the shadows, and the right should be the highlights. So if we want to increase the highlights, we bring this up. If we want to decrease the shadows, we bring this down. And that way you can really control the, the Luma level with the Saturation. Then you have the saturation versus the saturation, which means that the more saturated things, you can desaturate them and the less saturated things in your uh, shot, you can increase the saturation on. So here we have the less saturated and the more saturated. So the more saturated, you can increase them or decrease them and increase the ones that aren't so saturated and make it all weird. So. But yeah, everything has its use. It really depends on what you're working with. But a lot of these tools also work just to correct stuff. So you might not be seeing the options or the opportunities right now, but I'm really in love with this update. You can do so many things and you can really go and tweak it. Even over here, uh, maybe you want to change this color. Then you go into the hue versus the hue. And like, for example, here, we want to make it a different kind of uh, sunset. So we take it over here. And just make it like warmer. And then we can go to the hue and the saturation versus the saturation. And make like a dot here and here. And like the desaturated parts, we want to saturate them up a little bit more. And desaturate this. And now I think like the green could pop a little bit more. So we go over here. And just increase the green levels. And there we go. And maybe we want to even change the greens. So we go back to the hue versus the hue. Click over here. And maybe make them more like golden. And just see what you can do with this. So we have a... Uh, let's go over here in the curves. A before and an after shot. So such a big difference just by playing with these curves. And that's that's just amazing. 
So the next update is especially in the audio. If you go to the audio tab, we have the essential sound, which is also kind of new, um, but they introduced a few new things in here to really make your audio game so much easier. It's super easy to remove like noise in a dialogue. So if you go into dialogue, we can see in here, we have the loudness, uh, which we can auto match, of course, which we already could do. But if we go into the repair tab, we have the new reduce noise. And if we check this on, we can really simply slide this over until you're satisfied with the noise. And due to their new logarithms, it would actually take the noise from your audio track, which I used to do in Adobe Audition with a lot of steps and a lot of clicks. I can just do it right now in Adobe Premiere Pro with one simple slider. You also have the reduced rumble, dehum, and so on and so on. So a lot of cool things that you can play around with to really enhance your voice and do everything inside of Premiere Pro. Some things that you used to re-record, you can now probably fix in Adobe Premiere Pro. So that's something I like a lot. Uh, especially because I'm a one-man band. So the more things you can do inside of the software and the easier you can do them, I just love those updates. And then the last update is actually in the essential graphics, which is also really nice, but I don't have any examples on it right now. So basically what they have changed is the option to when you're creating an essential graphics in Adobe After Effects to have an intro and an outro so you can do your own timing of your essential graphic and also to be able to change your font style and your font size inside of the essential graphic when you're exporting from Adobe After Effects. So for me, that's a big update because we have a ton of essential graphics that I'm preparing for you guys. So if you're interested in them, definitely check out our website. We have a bunch of them to offer. And if you buy something from our website, it helps to support this channel. But that way you can import amazing advanced templates that are made in After Effects inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and just edit them right in Premiere Pro. And they basically improved the essential graphics workflow and gave you a few more options. All right, so that's it for the updates in Premiere Pro CC 2019. Let me know what your favorite update was from the release. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you get notified when I upload new videos.